Hello everyone, welcome to session three of LTech 782, Design-Based Research in Education. Starting this week, things are going to feel a bit different. So far, our journey into the realm of design-based research has been more or less a whole group activity. Together, we've learned about the methodological positioning of DBR, all the different names design research goes by, and we've also learned about its features, its theoretical and practical outputs, and most recently, we thought about the process involved in conducting successful design-based research. As we enter week three, we're going to shift away from this lockstep whole group cadence into a more agile and personalized approach. The reason for this shift is to help ensure that you all get the most out of this short six-week semester. From here on out, every one of you is going to be focusing on his or her own individual educational problem and applying DBR to address that problem. Of course, you won't be alone during this process. You're going to have me as a guide, as well as your critical friends to lean on along the way. So what I want to do in the next few minutes is map out the next four weeks of the semester. My hope is this will get you excited about what's to come while also helping you plan ahead and focus in on the main deliverable of the course, which is the DBR proposal. The purpose of the DBR proposal is for you, as an individual researcher, to advance a design-based research study that's aligned with your personal research interests. Now, we're not actually going to implement these plans in this class. There simply isn't enough time on the one hand, and on the other, the COVID-19 situation makes it pretty difficult to conduct any kind of field-based work. Now, despite these constraints, we're still going to act as if we were actually preparing to conduct a design-based research. And to be clear, all that work and planning will take the form of your DBR proposal. So before we get into specifics about the proposal itself, let's take a look at the calendar. So of course, with this video, we are entering session three, which means there are four more sessions in front of us. If you're watching this, that means you've already been into Canvas and you've seen that the DBR proposal assignment has been assigned today. That proposal is going to be due on August 17th. Now, take a look at session six. Actually, the last day of instruction is Friday, August 14th. However, if you want to take that extra weekend and hand in your DBR proposal on Monday, August 17th, that morning, that's totally fine. I will begin grading for the class that Monday because grades are due on Tuesday, August 18th. Now, let's talk a little bit about the requirements for the DBR proposal. Your DBR proposal needs to have eight sections, and you can see them listed here. Background and problem statement, purpose, aims, and scope, a lit review, theoretical framework, research questions, research goals and approach, methods, and relevance. Now, don't panic. That seems like a lot. I'm not asking you to write another dissertation here. It's more specifically, I'm putting some constraints on this. Now, these eight requirements need to fit into six to eight pages double spaced. So in other words, this is a pretty short paper. And if you went with eight pages, you would have one page per section. Now, of course, some sections will be longer than others, and that's really going to be up to you and your writing style and the needs of your project. Now, that six to eight page limit excludes a title page, abstract, references, and appendices. I will ask that the DBR proposal follow APA style. And of course, it needs to leverage the course readings as well as personalized empirical and methodological articles. Now, overall, you're going to be graded on the quality and completeness of these components of your proposal. And in addition to quality, your paper will also be graded on writing in terms of tone, clarity and coherence, references, and mechanics. Now, let's talk a little bit about how we're going to get from A to B. Do this Friday is Critical Reflection 3, which is titled, What's Your Problem? Now, I'm going to talk more about Critical Reflection 3 in a minute, but the whole focus of that is going to be to get you to begin specifying the problem that you are going to propose addressing through DBR. 
that critical reflection three is due Friday because I immediately want you to go into scheduling your first critical friends meeting. Now that first critical friends meeting should happen sometime between Saturday the 25th and Friday the 31st. And let me talk a little bit about some guidelines for those critical friends meetings. Now you're all in groups of three and so these critical friends meetings should be synchronous and I want to encourage you to block off a minimum of 90 minutes and the thinking there is that each person in the group is going to have 30 minutes to focus on their work so that's the minimum honestly I would recommend closer to two hours and you can use whatever process you want but the goal is to have kind of a round-robin deep dive into each of your DBR projects and to help each other explore confirm and refine your project from week to week now after that on Monday August 3rd you are going to submit your fourth critical reflection which is simply going to be a progress report on what you've accomplished related to your proposal. Then again in session five we're going to do the same pattern. You're going to schedule a second critical friend meeting and then you're going to have critical reflection five due which is another progress report and that's going to be due on the 10th. And then in session six the focus will be entirely on wrapping up your DBR proposal. So that's an overview of the next four weeks and I'll be assigning specific readings each week to help you move through the process process of creating your proposal. So this week with Critical Reflection 3, we're going to let the analysis begin. And you can see a screenshot here of the main activities of the analysis and exploration phase as articulated by McKenney and Reeves. And so we're going to be focusing for Critical Reflection 3 on this initial orientation where we focus on the problem, the context, and the stakeholders. Now, I want to connect that to Easter Day's design arguments, which we talked a little bit about last week. And so, of course, there are lots of variables that we need to plug into a design argument, but what we're going to do this week is simply focus on the Y and the Z. Essentially, if you want to design intervention X, which we don't know what that intervention is going to be yet, for the purpose of Y in context Z. So in other words, we're focused on what is the purpose of this intervention? What are we trying to accomplish? In what context are we trying to accomplish that goal? Essentially, our initial orientation is going to help us focus on those two variables of the design argument. Okay, everyone, we're out of time for today. Have a great week, and I'll see you in Canvas.